you. You guys are amazing. You're amazing pastors, you know, just all over you. And um, your teens are awesome, just um, uh, so much unity and everything. You could do a lot where there's unity, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I always have like like five messages prepared, you know, literally, like I'm, I'm, I'm like those over-prepared people because I never know what God's going to do, you know, I just want, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, you know, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm like, so I'm, I'm ready with, with possibly, th- okay, I've narrowed it down to three, you know, and then I'm like standing there, and I'm like, what are you saying? What are you saying? Wait, that's not even in my notes. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, w- and it may just be like a little, a little highlight, and then we'll get back to the plan. Uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> um, but I was. And I have these books up here because I'm going to give them away eventually. Um, but I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, there's, there's a couple thoughts I'm going to start with. Let's just see where this goes. But there's so many intercessors in here. And I was just like, I rejoice in intercessors. Like, you're my, you're my club. You know, you're just, you know, like, it's a mentality. And, I, and you get into a room of intercessors. I don't have to explain a lot of things. I'll give you an example. When I say, man, I'm feeling something right now, I don't have to explain that in three points and chapter and verse, okay? Because, because as intercessors, you're like, oh, me too. Me too. And we're all on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you completely understand what I'm saying. And, but um, one of the things that I, I was just kind of like, and I'm trusting that you trust, trust my heart. Um, but one of the things I felt, there's a couple thoughts I want to bring to you, is that intercessors, because of what God has entrusted you with and taught you and shown you, intercessors should be the least defeated people in the room. Really, and you know, and I don't say that with any condemnation at all. I have stood behind these platforms and pu- pulpits all over the globe, feeling like I was the messiest girl in the room. You know what I'm saying, really? And wondering why God put me in front, and I'm just like, by the grace of God, go I. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a person. Like, I deal with my stuff. I'm very honest. I have accountability layers and all that kind of stuff. I'm very, very forthright that way. Um, but still working through stuff, you know, like hideous stuff, you know, and, and, and just, just choosing that, that God's word is true, that everything God says is true, and, and I'm in process, and he is upgrading me, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just working it out. And I can be messy and be in faith, you know what I'm saying? And I, I have great victories in my life. So that's the first thing, that intercessor should be the least defeated in the room. And I want to bring to you this thought that dropped in my heart right there as I was there, as as I was standing there in your worship, in this atmosphere, under this vision portal, you know, that I'm just like, I can't wait to tap this thing. I'm like, I'm going to explore, you know. Um, and, And so as I'm standing, this thought dropped into me. So not only should you not be the most, not only should you not be the most, de- um, you should not be the most defeated pe- people in the room. Did I say that right? Yeah. You should also be, you should also be the wealthiest. You're an intercessor. You should be poor no more. I want to challenge your thinking. I'm serious. I, I was right here, and it just dropped right in my head. And I'm just like, I'm like, where are you going, God? Where are you going? Why are you bringing this out? Why are you bringing this out? Because it is a frame of mind. Yes, please. So as I was standing there worshiping and I knew the glory came on her I saw fire come like a not a dragon but I mean I saw a fire breathing woman standing there and I saw the fire of God come out of your mouth and I so I feel like what she's saying is the fire of God on that word about being the wealthiest that we are to be because God is opening up that portal it's it's we don't know how we're going to go about it because that's God's deal but that's why we have to go deeper to come up higher for him to get give us revelation for that wealth strategy 
You know, and I was I was sharing earlier, um, you know, that a lot of times when I go through a place or when I show up somewhere, it's usually because they're about ready to get a building or they're in that process. And I have no idea why I just make that appearance. I've just wondered all the time, you know, it's like, it's like, and, and it's because, you know, I, one of the things that, that for me is I am a, uh, what I would say, a, a land deliverer and a buildings and land person. And just understanding about how to unlock land so that that you know in in the in the in intercession in prophetic intercession, because healed land brings economy to you, and people don't always understand that. And and like working through natural disasters and different things and the the keys for those things because natural disasters puts puts um, a, a whole region into economic distress. You know, it puts them into like trauma and economic distress and learning that as the church, we can reverse it. But it's, it's some truths that a lot of people don't want to face, you know, or they or it's just it seems like a little bit insensitive. Sometimes it's, I think it has to do with how you present it. But but those kind of things. And but this whole thing with with wealth, this whole thing with wealth. Um, here's what I was sensing that I needed to pray into. And I don't know if I need to bring any teaching with it, but I'll just go for it, is if you are in in ministry and you need a church building, like you need a building for your church, um, and, and you're like, there's, it's just not happening. I want you to stand up. You know, if you need a building, this whole thing, like it is really a big deal for a church to get a building because land has to be delivered. Land has to be delivered, okay? I'm, I'm marking you right now. You sit back down. I'm going to come back to you, okay? All right, so that tells me we, we have some of that going on. And so let me explain some of the intercessory process in this whole land. So I was not going here. We are going here. And so um, I wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> so, and so what happened when we started pastoring, the, um, we were blessed with the building, um, you know, just right at the get-go. We've never had to go search for the building, but the building was like 80 years old, um, and it hadn't been touched since like the 50s, and we got it. When did we, when did we get it? Um, I can't remember. We've been pastoring for almost 24 years, so, so that would have been... Okay, do the math. I know it turned 100 in, in uh, 2017, okay? So it, it, hadn't, it hadn't had any, like, work done on it. It was falling apart and all that kind of stuff. So we, we you know, my husband took on the, the building and did the, the, um, the building project and, and worked with the, the demons in the, in the um, you know, in the uh, planning commission, you know, those, those devils, you know, those ones. Any planning commission people here? I may have to apologize. So, so anyway, you know those people, and so you know, and that my husband will tell you this. That was his first breakdown. He was a young guy doing a huge building campaign, and it was just it was warfare, and I mean it was just like the the stress of doing what's normal, and then warfare on top of it because of the battle over the buildings. Because buildings are are function it's functionality. You know, we we are the church. I know I know people like kind of doctor these statements to not really have a certain level of responsibility that I think you should have. And they say, well, I'm the church. We can meet anywhere. That's true. The church fails to be the church unless you gather. And buildings create that functionality for you to gather well and, and begin to sow into the land, you know, in, a, in unity. And it's interesting how the land sings the song of the church that's that it's on. You know what I'm saying? Or the church that's on it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's interesting how everything responds. And so, um, so anyway, I remember we were, we were, you know, doing this building project. I remember as an intercessor, the Lord teaching me about land and, and how to pray into the land. And my first like real big territorial spirit battle that, you know, that in this line, along this line is all I remember is we started praying on Saturday nights, um, you know, as a church, uh, it was our first times of corporate prayer together. And we started on Saturday nights and we started praying together for like an hour. And, you know, I can't say it was that great of a prayer time. It was a little boring and a little bit sparse, but we did it right. And the Lord can do a, a, a lot with your little, let me tell you something, you know? And so we would meet for prayer, but what was happening to me is every time I came to the place of prayer, I'd feel this clamp on my head. 
you know, like something was squeezing, the, squeezing my head down. And so um, I, I just was like, what is going on? Because it was very, very intense. And so the Holy Spirit, he, he told me what it was. You know, that's the gift of discerning the spirits. He'll tell you exactly what you're dealing with. You know, and here's the thing. Once something is exposed, it's exposed. You know, it's, it's ready, to, ready to go down. And he says, this is a spirit of witchcraft that is uh, sitting on the north side of your city. We are on the south side. And he said, this is a spirit of witchcraft sitting on the north side of your city. And so then, um, uh, you know, so at least I knew what it was. And at that time, I didn't really have a mindset that I should probably get some intercessors to help me pray through this because it was already bizarre enough. You know, it was just, you know, yes, there is a spirit sitting on the north side of our city, you know, and we're like fresh pastors and, you know, I was already, you know, kooky enough. And, and so, um, uh, that was not going to help my reputation, let's put it that way. And so anyway, I was just like, and I, I didn't really know what to do. And and so I was just following the Holy Spirit and just praying as I thought to pray. But this contention got terrible. It got really, really bad. And I remember in the middle of the night, one night, um, I, I, I was contending with this thing. And, and so you say, well, what happened? Well, what happened is the Holy Spirit picked a fight through me. Because I don't go after those things. Anybody who's dealt with territorial spirits, I'm not talking about the spirits that possess people. That's different. That's one level. But territorial spirits are a whole nother entity. And if you've ever dealt with them at all, you know you just don't pick a fight with those just because you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you need to hear the Lord. You have all authority in Jesus' name, but we are in partnership. Okay? So you need to get authorization to use your authority in those kind of things. You know, otherwise we'll be mopping you off the ground, okay? You know, you go cuckoo, you intercessor and crazy. What were you doing? And so anyway, we were, um, and so I, you know, this contention was very real. And so it's the middle of the night and I'm contending like, and it's like I'm in this fight that I never picked, right? And I'm a fighter by nature, but this was like, okay, this was just, just beyond. And so it felt like I could die. I mean, really, I'm like, this is what happens when people die in their sleep. This is what, exactly what happens. This, you know, all these thoughts are going through my brain. And so then what happened is my spirit left my body. And I um, remember sh uh, uh, going, I don't know how I did it. I, you know, I just don't know. I ended up going to five households and uh, people in our church, families in our church. And I remember in this, like, vision, I don't know what you call it. I remember trying to wake them up in the middle of the night, say, pray for me, pray for me. You understand, you, you're, you're with me. Okay, you're tracking. I said, pray for me, pray for me. And I did this at five households. And then I came back to my body in, in my house. And then in about an hour, I was at peace. The battle wasn't over, but I was at peace. And I'm like, okay, somebody, somebody's praying for me. I was so sure that happened. And keep in mind, this is way back in the beginning before, like, like these experiences are like nothing to us now. But back then, it was like fresh, fresh and weird. And so, and, and so I, that Sunday, I found those people, and I asked them. I said, did you pray for me uh, the other night? Did you wake up in the middle of the night and pray for me? And one by one, I said, did you pray for me? And they're like, no. Did you pray for me? Nope. You? No. You? No. You. And then, and then this, the fifth one, yes, I prayed for you. Your spirit showed up in my house. <laughs> and she says, I knew something was wrong, <laughs> you know, because I didn't normally appear in your house. <laughs> you know, she's like, something's up. And so, so anyway, so she, she prayed for me. And then, um, so then what happened, we were in our time of fasting and prayer. I'm still contending, but towards the end of that fast, towards the end of that fast at, at Saturday night prayer, I felt the breakthrough, okay? Like, I literally felt it. Have you ever felt your answer to prayer before the answer came? Have you ever felt that? It's like, I don't know how to explain it. You just, it's like something breaks. It's, it's like a breakthrough. And I remember that point of breakthrough, and it was so weird. Like, I don't know. I don't even know why I did this. I kicked my shoes off, and I said, got it, you know? And so, so anyway, and and... Um, so then what happened? You said, well, well, people talk like that a lot. Well, I took out this territorial spirit, and I, I went against the, the spirit over New York City, and, then, you know, and I'm just like, great, can you prove that? Because people say all sorts of stuff. And if that really is happening to you, there's going to be proof. There's going to be proof. You say, well, what, what proof do you have? Well, about uh, the, over the next year, you see, the north side of the city was undeveloped. It was just dirt. 
That's all that was out there was just dirt. Remember, we're a farm community. So it's just like dirt. That's it. That's all you got. I think over in one part of it, there were some cows and manure, and that was, and it smelled, and that's it. So you don't have cows here, huh? You do? Okay, so you know that, you know that smell. Yeah, it's the smell of money. That's what we say. So <laughs> it's like someone's making money today. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, but there was nothing there. Over the next year, that whole area got developed. We're talking houses, schools, churches, I mean, um, uh, businesses, everything. Everything got developed over there. We got a house over in the north side of the city. To the victor goes the spoils, right? Right? Okay. Then, fast forward a while, we got a church in the north side of the city given to us. Five acres given to us. Okay, so, so the, here's, what I'm, here's, here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going, okay? All right, there's this thing like, like if, if, you, if you, we really begin to listen to the Holy Spirit, do your assignments, do your prayer assignments, do your prayer assignments. But here's what I'm saying is that there is a reward for you, okay? Because when you engage in any kind of battle that the Lord has put you in, he will reward you. Every single time, he will reward you. You may not know what it is, but it is coming. Okay, so we end up, what? We, with a house? We end up with a church. That whole area developed. Okay, so it just stirs up all the economy. It's like this ripple effect, right? This ripple effect. All right, so, so then, I'm going to get back to you building people, okay? Then, I know God is on this thing. This is like, I could feel it. Hello. Uh, <laughs> then, um, you know, I've been doing like these land assignments, these prayer assignments. I feel the heat of God. I've been doing these land assignments, these prayer assignments, just when, when he leads me, because sometimes these, these, um, uh, these territorial intercessory assignments, they take a lot out of me. Sometimes I'll, I'll have to re actually recover, to be honest with you, and it'll take me a few years sometimes, and I'll just be like, nothing more. I need, I need a break, you know, and I, I go into recovery mode. Um, because there's, there's, they take so much. But again, I'm looking for that proof, and I always get rewarded, okay? Like, my books are all out of the journey. All these books are out of the journey. That's, that's the Lord's reward. It's the Lord's reward to put it up to pen and paper, you know, and, and teach the body of Christ these principles. That, that's like redemption. It's redemption. So anyway, um, moving fast forward, you know, I've been doing these assignments for, for quite a while, but again, they're very paced because I can only take so much. And so um, I, I mentioned Perth earlier today. I mentioned Perth. So what happened is on my way into that, um, into that, you know, I had a, just a terrific battle with a, a python kite spirit. I had no idea they had this deity that was like an ancient deity stronghold. I had no idea. I just know I was like in the emergency room. I'm in bed for like five days right before a trip, and I never ever go to the emergency room. I never ever get that sick, and I'm just like, I can't breathe, python, you know. And it turned out that you know that that's the spirit I was dealing with. So I just went through all that, had a wonderful prayer conference. Um, Lord really encountered me. I may may or may not share that later, but but Lord really encountered me, and it really changed my life. Okay, so fast forward, they, they invite me back again. So nine months later, they invite me back again for my first, first time there. And so what happens is we're in our fasting and prayer season. And um, uh, the Lord uh, wakes me up uh, in the middle of the night during our fasting and prayer season, right before I'm about ready to go back to Perth. This is my second hit there. Uh, and so, so he wakes me up in the middle of the night, and he, and he counsels me for three hours. That's serious business, okay? He counsels me for three hours, okay? I don't know about you, but I don't get woken up in the middle of the night and counseled like that, like hardly ever. So I knew it was important. And so, um, and so he counsels me for three hours, letting me know that I'm going to go into that, that place, and I'm going to have a travail, but a, not, not the regular one. We know what travail is, right? Travail is, uh, it's like the final prayer, you know? everybody's prayed and then there's like this final push of prayer and um you know it's just so glorious when it's you you know <laughs> and, and just like you're giving birth you know and you can't manufacture that it's like the holy spirit will come on you to to push push it out it's the, it's the, the very final 
prayer, and you're usually left screaming on the floor, and we have to help you, right? That's, that's you know, travail. Intercessors know this, okay? And so anyway, he says, you're going to have a travail. It, but it's not the normal one. He says, it's a travail of heart. So essentially, you know, what I understood is like, instead of like, you know, usually double over, it was going to be up here in my heart. It's going to be up here. And he says, it's going to be very, very painful, and you're going to want to die, no joke. I'm like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> and, then he, and then he says, so you need to tell your, your prayer teams and their prayer teams to pray for you that you don't die. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? And so, so he counsels me for three hours on this thing. Three hours. I'm like, this is serious. It's totally serious. And so anyway, I just like obeyed the Lord and I told my teams. I told them. You know, and, um, and so then what happens is I go and I do this conference, this prayer, I can't remember, it was a prayer conference, I think it was a prayer conference. So I go and do this conference, you know, yada, yada, it was, you know, wonderful, great, everything. And then we have the regional intercessors meeting, um, you know, and we're just like prayer people are in there. Next thing you know, I am on the floor. I am travailing like I have never travailed before. It's in my heart zone. I'm travailing I'm out of my heart. I felt like my heart was splitting in two. You know, I mean, you know, maybe spiritually that is what happened. I don't know. But um, splitting in two, you know, I'm wanting to die. I'm just like, will you please, like, I need some escape. And so, so anyway, and, and their intercessors are praying. My intercessors are praying. And I totally get, and I, to this day, I can't describe what that did to me. I, I just don't, it takes, took me into some, like, depths. I, I just, to this day, I don't know how to describe that. I'm not the same. I think I'm better than I was before. I'm not sure, okay? And so, uh, you know, it's very hard to measure because I, I don't know how to even language it or qualify it or quantify it. I just don't. And so, so I, am you know, go through this, all right? So guess what? Next thing you know, their pastor over there said, yeah, I think we're going to get this building, <laughs> I think we're going to get this building. And the next thing you know, is like, yeah, we're going to get this building. Yeah, we're, we, we, we have the building. <laughs> you know, like, and I can't remember, it was like 10 acres, something like that. It was like, you know, crazy. It was nuts, okay? All right, but then while I was over there, I went through this, I call it the horrible travail, you know, <laughs> the horrible travail. And so I hear this word. I hear this word. I hear this word, and it's twins. I hear this word. And I denied twins a voice because I was not even, I wasn't even handling what just happened. All right. I just denied a voice. I'm not talking to you. I'm not answering that. Do not speak to me. <laughs> I was serious. I was totally serious. So came back home, came back home. And after that situation, I came back home and I'm debriefing with my intercessors. And I'm saying, well, this is what happened, this is what happened. And then one of our, our, my intercessors, he's a doctor, and he says, I'm hearing this word. He says, twins. <laughs> and I went, no. No. That's, I'm like, the Lord spoke that same thing to me. And so I was just so upset because I knew it was going to happen again. I was so upset because, I, you know, it was rough the first time. Rough. We want, do, do you want to be an in intercessor? I mean, really, sometimes, like, we, we, we want it on our terms. So then, so then, twins, nothing comes up of it until about, I don't know, four months later. I, I wasn't looking for it because I, didn't, I was, like, still in denial, okay? And so, I don't know, four months later. So we're having our, you know, regular prayer time. And, you know, we're all meeting. And next thing you know, I am on the floor, and I'm going through it again. It was worse. It was worse. I'm just like, you know, just, just nuts. It was crazy. And so I'm thinking maybe a month or two later, my husband literally walks into the house. He walks into the kitchen. I was doing something, probably dishes or something. He walks into the kitchen. He says, I'm opening up two campuses. And I'm like, two? <laughs> and he's like, yes, I've got it. It's in me. I got it. I'm doing it now. 
Okay. So next thing you know, we open up these, we call them gatherings in two different cities, gatherings. And they, you know, we open them up, they fill up immediately. Okay. We're like in hotels. And so then a while later, building number one comes. Then we have a potential for building number two in the city, but my husband's like, I'm not doing two of these at one time. So, so my whole point is this. My whole point is this. Intercessors should not be poor. Amen. Amen. There is a reward to your work. There's a reward. Now, for me, it seems to be like in the land building thing. Fine. Okay. You know, fine. Um, but, but there's a reward to your work. And there's something the Lord is wanting to get across to you that he pays his intercessors well. You have denied yourself his word for wealth to you because I don't think you actually thought it was for you. And you say, who, me? Yeah, you. But I never, yeah, you. How can that, yeah, you. I want to challenge you. I heard it. It dropped right on me as I was sitting there. Dropped right on me. That the Lord wants to sh shift your game. <laughs> That's right. Intercessors, poor no more. Poor no more. I feel this working in your brain right now. I feel it working in your brain. I feel it working in your brain. Lord, I just thank you. Let it, let it marinate. Let it marinate. Intercessors should be the wealthiest people in the room. It's not a compromise of your call. It, it, it's not a, a denial of intercession in your life. Okay? It's a reward for your work. The Lord pays his intercessors well. Why not? Why not? Why not? Okay, I want you to just really begin to, to ask yourself these questions. Have I agreed with poverty? Have I denied God's wealth a voice in my life? Have I thought, well, this is for business people. Great, fine. But thought this wasn't for me. It's amazing what the Lord will gift to you. It's amazing what he will do, what he will impart to you in dreams. I can't tell you how many times I've had these weird things in dreams, like intercessory. How many of you pray in your dreams? And I've, I've had these Weird intercessory things happen in dreams, and next thing you know, money has shaken out of it. I'll give you an example. So I was thinking, um, uh, what was it? I had come out of Florida. I come out of Florida, and um, I I came home, and that night I, I was out Florida, and I went to, and I came home, and that night I had this dream, and I was um, uh, I was in this contention with a spirit of chaos. And it was, it was back in Florida, not where I was living, but I was in contention in Florida where I, where I had been ministering with the spirit of chaos. Totally contending with it. Totally just nuts. Absolutely nuts what was going on in this dream. I think within a day or two at that airport, right in that area, uh, this guy started shooting people, killing them within a day or two. And I was very upset because I thought, I, I was like, I'm like, I don't know if I prayed through it, you know, and I got some counsel. And the person who counseled me, the prophet who counseled me, he says, you don't know who, who uh, didn't get killed because you prayed. But he said, what do you mean money shook out? So I'm in this contention, in this contention, okay? And this has happened to me more than once, but I'll give you this story. And so next thing I know, my husband's, um, uh, we'll just say relatives, some relatives of him, of his, that live in Florida, give him a call. And they say, you know, we're thinking about giving um, a donation to the church. They've never given a donation to church. Never. And they're like, so how do we go about doing that? 
And so my husband tells him how to go about doing that. And it was several thousand dollars. And that was, let me tell you, when that call came, it came that Sunday morning when I'm sharing with my husband, I had this dream. And next thing you know, he's getting a text. He's like, so-and-so in Florida, you know, my relatives in Florida, they're giving money to the church. I've had that happen enough times where I know it's legit. The Lord will reward his intercessors. He will reward his intercessors. Are you hearing me? I'll tell you one more like that. I was thinking we'll bring this one. I was in a a prayer assignment for California, and I was dealing with uh, the spirit of Jezebel and an attack coming against the children in California. This was before all the crazy legislation came out, uh, uh, you know, going into the schools, all the nutty stuff that started happening. And it was beforehand. And so I was in this contention, in this contention, it was showing up in my dreams and all this crazy stuff. So I remember specifically uh, being in this contention with this Jezebel spirit uh, in, in connection to California. It was going after the children. And I don't know why I did this in the dream. You know, I, I just don't know. Sometimes I wonder if it's my personality or if it's God. I'm not sure. <laughs> And so I had uh, one of her dogs, and I've, there's a history behind that, but I had her dog for some reason. And I remember writing a note on the, the you know, writing a note and attaching to the dog. This is what I wrote on the note. I'm coming after you. Okay. <laughs> so I, I attached the note to the dog, and in the dream, I sent the dog off back to her. And then I watched her take her dog. It was like, you know, I don't know how to explain distance in dreams, but she was far off, but I could see her. I watched her take the dog. I watched her take the note, read the note. And when she read the note, she broke the dog's neck. Oh, she's like that. She's a total murderer. And so like, she'll kill anything. And so anyway, it's weird that I could say that. Like, I know her. I do know her. (laughs) You know, and so, um, you know, you get to know the the resident spirits. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know them. They know you. And so, Uh, Paul, I know, you know, Jesus, I know, you know him. So that's the dream, right? I'm coming after you. Anyway, um, a a lady in the church, uh, her and her husband were getting ready to go on uh, a very extended missions uh, trip, very extended. And she was having trouble getting the money for it. She's having a lot of trouble. And she comes to me and she says, I had this dream. And I said, yeah? I said, what's the dream? She says, well, she says, you were um, rebuking this demon that was holding my finances. And you were saying, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Okay? And she, and she says, and then I had this dream. And she says, and next thing you know, within like 24 hours, I started getting several thousand dollars for, for my, my trip. You know? And so, so that contention in the dream, that intercession in the dream, released the cash. The Lord will reward his intercessors. Intercessors should be poor no more.